So suppose you have an idea. Okay, what you want to do is you want to state that idea and state it separately from any strategic elements. The reason you want to do that is you want to understand what your business is about so you can be fully informed of what the strategic choices are. So if you already walk in and you say, well, my business is Uber for pets, the problem is that that doesn't convey an idea. There's some understanding of what Uber is and you might be able to order pets to be delivered to you or something like that, um, but it already tells you something about the strategy. Okay, so you want to separate out the idea from the strategy and that will present you with numerous options of business model strategies that you could use and could be associated with the ideas. And what we want to try and understand is how do you find those strategies to give you that choice? And then how do you choose amongst them? Okay, so that's this three-step process. You want to separate out the core idea from the strategy. You want to envisage alternative business models. And then you want to conduct some sort of strategic analysis on each to choose which one you're going to do first. So what are these business models? Well, they're a composition of four choices that together would comprise an entrepreneurial strategy. You know, obviously, I'm trying to give you a framework so these aren't locked hard, but we have found them quite useful, certainly at the Creative Destruction Lab, in actually understanding what businesses are doing. So those four choices are choice of technology, customers, competition, and identity. Let me try and explain each of these in turn, starting with technology. Technology is something you're already a bit familiar with. The way we think about technologies in an entrepreneurial or innovative environment is that what happens is you have a technology that allows you, with extra effort, to improve performance. At the outset, a little bit, oh, it's a hard slog. Then something happens and it cascades and becomes very easy to improve in performance before you reach some sort of limit. Now, the issue that arises with entrepreneurship is you can keep your idea on an existing technological path, or alternatively, what you can do is you can switch to a new one. The problem is, more often than not, switching to a new path involves a short-run loss in performance but it has, as you can see here, higher potential. It can move at a greater rate, and so you end up in a situation that is better than the previous technology. But the choice of which path you pursue is, of course, a choice. You could do either one, often for the same idea. Take an example of self-driving cars. Google uh, initially chose to retrofit existing vehicles to do this. This had a lot of advantages. One, it didn't necessarily have to think about making its own cars. And two, it's sort of a bit more familiar for people. It's more trusted and other things like that. But more recently, they've switched. And they've switched to a model that allows them to build their own cars. It doesn't have a steering wheel. It is optimized to be purely autonomous. Uh, and it's also, as you can see, quite small. Why is that? Well... Google decided rather than trying to get a car that did it all and completely replaced your current car to target people who are currently underserved, uh, namely uh, people who are challenged in some way or who are elderly and who need to get around not far distances and not quickly. And so that might be a better way to go. And so that's how Google, for instance, are making those technological choices. But you can see this arise in lots, lots of ventures.